At first glance, Hay on Wye may look like the average sleepy Welsh town, but it's renowned worldwide for a rather unusual feature its second hand bookshops. Originally a harebrained idea by local eccentric Richard Booth in the 70s, who owned a couple of bookshops at the time, as a publicity stunt he declared Hay an independent kingdom and dubbed himself King of Hay, the second hand book capital of the world. Since then, bookshops have sprung up all around the town, and at the moment there are around 20. But, in recent years, this trade has been declining, and some owners have found it too difficult to make a living and been forced to give up. One local bookseller explained to me that at one time, in the not-too-distant past, Hay was thriving all year round, with book buyers and collectors, and this was mainly down to the King of Hay. I think the uh, the mystique of Hay uh, is, is something that was built up because of Richard Booth. Uh, I mean, a lot of people now uh, probably don't um, um, don't know about Richard Booth because uh, he's not in in the news as much as he used to uh, be uh, <clears throat> but um, I think it's because we've still hay still synonymous with having 20 odd bookshops uh, at its zenith in the 90s there were about 30 bookshops in hay but of course due to people retiring and uh, not many younger people going into selling second-hand books. That's why there's been a demise. Another potential reason for the recent decline in the number of bookshops is the rise of the internet, and many people simply buy books online from sites such as eBay, Amazon and ABE Books. It, it stems back to um, the start of the internet. Uh, I mean, at one time, in fact, probably about uh, 20 years ago, Hay would be busy from January the 1st to December the 31st and that was entirely through footfall. Uh, again, there, uh, you, you would be producing catalogues at that particular time and also people would write to you wanting books etc or ringing you up. So that's where, um, where the business used to be. But with the advent of the internet, unfortunately, uh, footfall has decreased quite, in, uh, quite dramatically. So we do have to rely a lot more on selling on the internet. They once ran a bit of a poll on ABE Books online uh, and 50% of the respondents said, um, actually, I'd rather be in a shop than, than tapping the keyboard talking about it. Uh, and I was reminded of... Um, uh, Sideshow Bob in The Simpsons when he came on um, a giant screen in a, I think it was a baseball ground or American football ground to complain about what was on television. He said yes I know I'm on television complaining about what's on television but nonetheless that's the way I feel about it. But he says that although internet buying could partly have had an impact there is a much larger problem for Hay. Most people here seem to think that the rise of the internet means that most people stay at home to buy books and they can forego a visit to Hay. But I don't think that's the principal reason. Um, the principal reason, and I will send it straight out there, flat out, I believe, is Hay Festival. Hay Festival has brought uh, a kind of mentality that, to this town, which uh, is about aspiration, which is about culture, which is about being seen with the right people and saying the right things. And it's no longer about supporting a second-hand book town, rural, economic community. Those things I do not see to be married in any way at all. The Hay Festival was started by Norman Florence and his son Peter in 1987 and has since grown to become an internationally renowned event. In 2010, it was estimated that over 200,000 people came from across the world for the festival, but, as Derek Addyman explains, its roots are in the book trade. It's quite ironic that, uh, in fact, um, when uh, when Peter Florence started off the Hay Festival, it was known as the Hay Festival Literature and Arts, or and then the Hay Festival of Literature, and now it's just called the Hay Festival, of which there are now about fifteen all around the world. So it's really uh, Hay, the Hay Festival is a commodity, which uh, really. Uh, is not Hay, because Hay is not a corporate town, but the Hay Festival is right, is really a bit of a corporate name when you know when you actually think about it. One person said in the council chamber a couple of years ago that Hay wasn't well known until until the festival appeared, which was a, an outright lie. 
But as long as people of influence uh, and people who have um, access to the media can say these sorts of things, books will now always be second place to the festival and to the festival mentality. The reason, one of the reasons for the festival starting up, um, obviously was it was a convenient place with books and things like that. Um, but I think that the two are sort of interdependent, I mean not interdependent, they're sort of separate in the sense that they stand alone. The festival draws in an awful lot of people. Um, I mean there are a number of people who again, they've heard of Hay as a book town but they've also that's the other thing, if you talk to people, if you're abroad or if you're talking to people you meet, they'll know Hay as either a book town or a festival. So both are good, good, as far as the Chamber of Commerce are concerned, both are good attractors for bringing people into, into the town. Things have moved on, you have to become more professional and obviously the, the, the success has made it become more commercial and, I've, and, you know, and the big businesses attracted to it, you get the Sky Arts and you've got the sort of newspapers supporting it. Um, I think it's a shame because in some ways that's what we want but it's inevitable that it happens. Um, but no, I think I think that it's um, it still draws an awful lot of people in and I think that there's a legacy to that that the rest of the year people come to Hay as a result of, of, of hearing about it and that's what... So in that sense I think it, it, it's good. Whether it's become too commercial in a way, that's, that comes down to what you remember and what you, what you know. It's still a very, very good, and it's good for Hay. Hay has undergone many changes recently, the most notable of which was Richard Booth selling his flagship bookshop to American businesswoman Elizabeth Haycox. Since she bought the shop in 2009, extensive refurbishments have been carried out on the building, and she has also opened a cafe and a 40-seat cinema on the premises. But while Peter Florence has described it as the best bookshop in Hay, which sets a bar for all other booksellers, Paul Harris says he thinks the new owners of the shop haven't prioritised books as much as they sh should have. I think it needs the bookshop owner to talk about the books that they have. Um, I suspect, I can't prove this, I suspect that the new owners of the limited bookshop don't care as much about books as they do about the cafe. That's one thing. I think there is a, a growing congregation uh, or constituency of people who think a bookshop is better for having a cafe. I don't believe that. A bookshop is better for having better books. Um, you could put a cafe on the grounds of a second-hand car dealer, it doesn't make the battered Ford Fiesta look any better because you've got a cappuccino to go with it. We're in an, an age where it's nice to have a cappuccino while you're sitting there perusing the titles and they always use words like this. Rather than getting in and dirty with some books as the first line of attack because that's what Hay was, was built on, at least in the last 40 or 50 years. That's what we were here for. Uh, I think the new money in town doesn't actually care about that. Even though Hay is now gaining a reputation for more than just its bookshops, John Evans says that despite that, Hay will always be quintessentially known as the town of books. Hay will, has built up a reputation as being the town of books or second-hand books. They don't, we don't want to lose that. We want to maintain that. Um, I've sort of got a sort of strap line, really, that I say, uh, not only books, but to draw people into the town. And what has happened is, like a lot of other things, it's a shifting and a moving sort of economy. Uh, other things take its place. But there's a momentum with it at the moment. It's taken sort of 40 or 50 years almost since the early 60s when Richard Booth first started it. It's taken that long to get a reputation. It's unique really throughout the world. People know about it from, it's not just local to Britain or UK or Europe, it's known all over the world. It seems then that bookshops will always be an aspect of Hay which makes it unique, but with a number of booksellers in the town, what does the future hold for this industry? Yes, it, it keeps changing and shifting. Books will always be a feature of Hay and they're not going to go away just yet, but um, it's changing. It's an open, really an open house on that one. I mean, um, you know, due to rents and rates and things like that and the costs of travelling, uh, I mean, Hay at the moment is holding its own. When you think about the number of really good bookshops that used to be in some of the provincial towns in Britain, and also London, uh, the number of shops that have closed in London, very important shops over the years. So I, I, I think at the moment we're holding our own. Uh, as to the future, five or ten years, I mean, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's um, very difficult to give any kind of projection. So then, it would be too difficult to say what the future holds for bookshops in Hay, but the one thing everyone agrees on is that for the time being, Hay will be synonymous for its second-hand books.